In quantum mechanics, 2 pi and 4 pi represent the limit or boundary condition for a process of mathematical rotation or quantum spin. But what is spinning in quantum mechanics? It seems to be probability and uncertainty. This is like asking the question, what is waving in the wave equation? I believe we can have an objective, intuitive understanding of quantum mechanics if we explain it as a geometrical process based on 4 pi and 2 pi. The 4 pi can represent spherical geometry. This can be based on Huygens' principle of 1670 that says every point on a wavefront has the potential for a new spherical wave. We can think of the point on the wavefront as a photon of energy with an uncertain probabilistic future unfolding with each photon-electron interaction. Because the process is unfolding relative to the spherical surface of the wavefront, we have to square the radius, r squared. This is seen in the mathematics of quantum mechanics as c squared, the speed of the process, the speed of light squared, and e squared, representing the electron squared. Spheres always intersect as circles and this is why we have 2 pi in the mathematics of quantum mechanics. The two-dimensional surface of the sphere forms a manifold or boundary condition for positive and negative charge. The inner concave surface forms negative charge and the outer surface forms positive charge. Light radiates out as a sphere and when the surface of the sphere comes in contact with the electron probability cloud of an atom, it forms a photon-electron coupling, and our three-dimensional world changes with the movement of positive and negative charge. We measure this process as the passage of time, with the interior of the sphere forming our three-dimensional space. Therefore, we have Heisenberg's uncertainty principle between position and momentum, with 4 pi in the equation representing the spherical geometry. If we reformulate the uncertainty using energy and time instead of position and momentum, we have 2 pi in the equation representing the surface of the sphere. This geometrical interpretation of quantum mechanics is supported by the fact that the Planck constant is also linked to 2 pi. When there is an exchange of energy in the form of photon-electron coupling or dipole moment, the energy levels cannot drop below the centre of the sphere because the process is relative to the radius. This forms a minimum amount of energy forming a constant of action in space and time that we see mathematically as the Planck constant linked to 2 pi representing the circumference of the sphere. An emergent process can explain quantum entanglement. We have the wave particle nature of light and matter in the form of electrons, forming an interactive process, or what I like to call a blank canvas, that we can interact with. When we interact with the light waves by coming in contact with them, we form new photon particles or new photon oscillations. As part of an emergent process, this represents a new particle in space and a new moment in time, in just the same way as a pebble dropped into water will form ripples that are relative and synchronized as they radiate out from their center source. Light waves of a common source will have spin or polarization relative or synchronized to this new photon oscillation. This is a continuous process unfolding all around us with the spontaneous absorption and emission of light. It is because we are made of atoms that this process is relative to the energy and momentum of our actions. Therefore it is relative to how we set up and run experiments. 
I will place links below that explain how this emergent process can give us a logical understanding of the two-slit experiment, the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment, the EPR experiment, and the polarization paradox with visible light and microwaves. When you look at any object, the light waves entering your eyes create photon energy in the here and now, occurring at this exact moment in time, with an uncertain future unfolding moment by moment, photon by photon. Each observer is in the centre of their own reference frame, experiencing the moment of now, able to look back in time, in every direction, at the beauty of the stars. In quantum physics, we have a problem. It's called the measurement problem. Put very simply, the more we know the position of a quantum particle, the less certain we are of the momentum. And if we know the momentum really well, then we can't be quite sure of the position. There is a logical explanation of the measurement problem. If the universe is explained, as a continuum, with an emergent future unfolding relative to the atoms of the periodic table. When we look down into the atoms, we find there is no concept or flow of time in the subatomic world within the atoms. All we have is part charge or fractions of charge. And this is logical. If what we see and feel as the passage of time is formed by a process of energy exchange that is relative to the electron probability cloud that surrounds the nucleus of the atom, we have the spontaneous absorption and emission of light in the form of photon energy, forming the ever-changing world of our everyday life, with the movement of positive and negative charge, with the flow of electromagnetic fields. This represents an emergent process, with the future unfolding with each photon-electron coupling or dipole moment. In our everyday life, we measure this process as a period of time relative to the atoms of the periodic table and the wavelength of the light. Each one of us has an emergent uncertain future that will be relative to our position and the energy and momentum of our actions. The uncertainty of everyday life is represented at the smallest scale of this process by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. In such a theory, we can have a logical understanding of the measurement problem. It is the same problem we would have measuring any future event. We have a process of continuous energy exchange, or what I like to call continuous creation, with energy and mass being emergent properties that form the uncertainty of everyday life. As part of an emergent process, energy slows the rate the time flows, forming the time dilation of Einstein's relativity, with the curvature of space-time representing a geometrical reason for gravity as part of one universal process. I will place links here that explains this in greater detail. Thanks for watching. Please sub and share. It will help the promotion of this theory.